All right, I'm going to introduce uh, myself again. Uh, my name is Ken Lee, and Nessa Beach is here as well. Uh, we are going to the present the road rating of post tension cast in place concrete segmental bridge. Uh, Jacob has uh, the capability to design the road rate this kind of bridge. So we are glad to share our designed road rating the work experience with the whole audience today. Uh, I will outline today's presentation briefly. Uh, Nessa was uh, the project manager of CDOT the road writing task order. So the, she is going to the introduce overview of the project and bridge and challenging aspect of the bridge design. Also, we are going to the highlight uh, main topics of the presentation, including time dependent material behavior and the construction stage analysis. Then we'll explore the evaluation of post analysis, uh, MIDAS design and then load ratings capability. Uh, we'll try to demonstrate MIDAS feature directly for the post analysis design and the load rating, as still if we have time. Uh, hopefully we can make it. Uh, finally, we'll conclude our presentation. Uh, Nessa is going to take over to introduce the project overview. Okay, this is a location map showing the location of the uh, structure we'll be discussing. The Maroon Creek Bridge is a post-tension cast-in-place segmental bridge. It's located along Colorado State Highway 82 in the world-class ski resort town of Aspen. You can see here it's located between Buttermilk Ski Resort and Aspen Main Street. It crosses the wide and deep Maroon Creek Basin and serves as one of two entrances from the west into the town of Aspen. The load rating of Maroon Creek Bridge was completed under a CDOT load rating task order. The first of the, this task order, which was the first of two, rated 20 structures in the state that were either missing load ratings or in need of updated load ratings. This was a very exciting project as with the variety of structure types we've ha we had, different load rating methods as well as software were used. In addition to using MIDAS for our Maroon Creek Bridge, MIDAS was also used to rate a three-span steel slant leg. Additional ratings included using newer features available in AASHTO BRR to rate both curved steel and multi-cell cast-in-place PT box girders. Bentley Consplice was used for a splice post-tension new girder structure, and a concrete arch culvert was modeled in SAP 2000. The new structure of Maroon Creek was constructed adjacent to the original structure. The original structure is the oldest bridge in service in the Colorado State Highway System and listed in the National Register of Historic Places. It also had the lowest efficiency rating in the state. It was originally constructed as a railroad trestle bridge in 1888, then converted for highway use in 1929 and widened in 1963. More than 22,000 vehicles cross at this structure every day. The bridge deck of the replacement structure is 73 watts 73 feet wide, and it includes a 12-foot pedestrian and bike path. Shown here is an elevation view of the new structure. It's a 90-foot tall, three-span structure that is fully integral at the piers. A 270-foot long main span is flanked by two 170-foot long end spans. It was built using a pair of form travelers and the balanced cantilever method of construction. This picture here shows how the new structure was con constructed, constructed adjacent to the existing. Due to the historic nature, nature of the existing structure um, and the existing roadway alignment, the existing structure is kept in place as a pedestrian structure. Um, the piers form an A shape with the capital section at the top of the pier that is flared at the same angles as the outrigger of the existing bridge. In this elevation and section view of the pier, you can see how the shape of the pier reflects the shape of the existing trestle while also providing a fully integral connection with the superstructure. Here you can see the typical cross section and the top and bottom tendon profile. Typical segments uh, for this bridge were 15 feet long. The main structure cross section is a constant 13.5 feet deep with a 19-foot-long uh, deck overhangs and ribbed elements for support. 
The bottom slab of the segment thickens towards the pier tables. Ken will go into more detail on the tendon layout um, details and how this was defined in our MIDAS model. Here's an additional view of the original and replacement structure. You can see here the typical segments, including the ribbed overhang elements for support, the A shape of the piers that match the existing trestle bridge, and the integral pier cap. Uh, some challenging aspects specific to post-tension cast in place segmental bridge design include both the transverse and longitudinal analysis, accounting for the detailed construction stages, time-dependent behavior, interaction of transverse bending with the longitudinal shear in the web, uh, complicated geometry, and prevention of the substructure flexural crack during unbalanced construction stages. And finally, the load rating of the structure, which we will go into detail. The original the design performed by uh, Parsons Transportation Group and uh, Jacobs uh, provide the uh, construction support. Uh, so the, we are not going to go through the, all the design aspect that Nessa mentioned uh, because of we work on the, the load rating of existing structure. So we are going to focus on the four main topics relevant to load rating, uh, which are longitudinal analysis and design, construction page analysis, time-dependent behavior, and load rating. Uh, here is a completed bridge model that is shown. Uh, superstructure is fully integral to uh, substructure with a rigid link in MIDAS. Uh, we assigned the fully uh, uh, con constrained boundaries at the pier and uh, expansion allowed at the abutment at each end. Uh, Clip shrinkage uh, properties are defined and uh, calculated based on the Euro code the CB FIB 1978 uh, using the concrete strength base of 6 KSI. Uh, relative humidity was 40%. Uh, creep, coefficient, creep coefficient is calculated and compared to uh, the creep coefficient generated internally in MIDAS. Uh, all trend is very uh, comparable and the magnitude is pretty much is comparable. Uh, this is a uh, very important process to verify the material behavior especially uh, for this bridge, it has a non-linearity structurally, uh, all, which is all from the material non-linearity. Uh, tendon, pro tendon profile is shown on the plan view and elevation view. Uh, straight tendons are used at the top slab, and then we have a draped tendon, as well as we have a PT at the each end of the slab. Uh, tendon properties are followed. Uh, low relaxation, 0.6 inch diameter, the strand was used. Uh, Duct diameter was 4 inch. Uh, ultimate strength of the strand is 270 uh, KSI, and the yield strength uh, was 216 KSI. Uh, we also the defined the uh, uh, friction coefficient, which is 0.2. Also, the Uber, the friction coefficient is assigned. Uh, anchor set was defined as 3 8 inch, uh, which allows uh, anchorage slippage. All the post, uh, all tendon uh, grouted after the pre stretching. Here is a jacking first summary at the anchoring zone. Uh, we uh, applied a, uh, jacking force. Uh, 520 kips alternatively at each anchorage. Uh, 17 load cases consider uh, including the foam traveler loading for the uh, girder erection. Uh, then 20 load combination uh, was constructed of in service for uh, and in strength load combination. Also, uh, time, uh, temperature, the gradient is applied according to uh, ASHTO uh, specification. Uh, 
on the right side, you can see a structural deformation under a negative temperature gradient. Uh, also, you can see um, a structural deformation under the positive temperature, gra uh, tem temperature gradient at the bottom. Uh, now we are going to the illustrate uh, why the construction stage analysis are so crucial for the segmental bridge. Uh, there are, I'm going to talk about two simple examples to illustrate uh, construction stage analysis importance. Uh, one is a moment response under the surface uh, without construction stage and with the construction stages. Uh, without construction, st uh, construction stage, the system itself is simply just three-bay frame, uh, so indeterminate structure. So we can imagine the moment response on the surface easily. But uh, during the construction, we have a cantilever stage. At this, at this stage, is most of the surface carried by the cantilever system. Uh, after the closure port, the entire system that becomes three-bay frame. Uh, this is uh, one of the reason uh, construction the stage analysis is important. And then the other example, uh, moment response uh, under the tendon at the top slab uh, with the, without the construction stage analysis, the structure itself uh, system of a structure, the indeterminate structure, so we can see the secondary moment, which, which is a significant as span 2. Uh, but the for a cantilever system, uh, which is a determinate structure, so the during construction stage by segment by segment, we apply top tendon uh, for to make sure the integral entire system then we don't expect any secondary effect because no boundary constraint. Total 11 construction stages uh, considered. We assume the bridge is complete for 306 days. Uh, after that, uh, we apply the creep, the shrinkage for 10 years. Also, we assign the groups of uh, element, the boundary condition, the road cases to each construction stage according to optimized uh, construction sequence. Here is shown uh, some of the main construction stages. Uh, first one, the single, the cantilever is constructed first with a form traveler loading. Then two cantilever is constructed then the closure port completed the span one uh, shown at the top, and then the span three is the closure port completed. Then entire system completed after the closure port the span two. Then we assign the superimposed, uh, superimposed additional load uh, and the 10 years long and the creep and shrinkage. Uh, here is the, the summarized the summation of construction stages demand uh, for the reaction, the deformation, the force calculations. Uh, we need to keep in mind for creep, the shrinkage especially, there is no physical loading like uh, the temperature. So if a system does not have a boundary constraint, then no reaction, the internal forces develop. Uh, all deformation is driven by a primary effect, especially for uh, uh, tendon and creep and shrinkage. Uh, this is a profile of uh, stress histories. Uh, I like these features very much because we can plot uh, entire uh, stress histories at the all stress of, at all construction stages then we can understand what's going on the, of the system behavior uh, during the construction stage. And then we can the, compare the stress demand uh, to uh, gather the capacity. 
uh, this configuration of the history is uh, at the bottom slab of the girder. Uh, this is another the output uh, for, for one of the, the load combinations after the bridge completion in service. Uh, top view, uh, the stress at the top slab. The bottom view is the stress at the bottom slab. Uh, tendon stress limit are summarized based on the ASHTO the specification. All the stress demand along the tendon uh, should be lower than uh, this limit. Uh, this is the profile of uh, one of the top tendons uh, at the different the construction stages. Uh, for you, uh, you can see that uh, stress uh, oops, sorry. You can see that the stress at the anchor is at the construction stage two is about the 700 kips, uh, but the, which is uh, dropped down to uh, six around the 640 at the construction stage 11 uh, after the creep the shrinkage applied. So the, we can uh, visualize tendon uh, loads easily according to the uh, con uh, according to the construction stage we concern uh, in order to get accurate load rating results it's necessary necessary to define the steel reinforcing in each section along the superstructure uh, this tab can be found under the models property section manager and reinforcements it allows you to define the bar size uh, the number of bars, the clear cover um, of both the top and bottom longitudinal reinforcing. When multiple sections are defined, as the cases for our model where our bottom slab thickens near the supports, uh, this reinforcing needs to be defined for each section. And you can see each of our sections shown on the left. Sorry. <laughs> That's it. Now one, one more, one more back. Um, additionally, under the same section manager, you can also define the shear and torsional reinforcing uh, for each section. The required transverse reinforcing data includes the spacing of the reinforcing, the angle of inclination the total area of transverse reinforcing in the web. The torsional reinforcing input includes the spacing of the reinforcing, the area of the transverse torsional reinforcing, and the total area of the longitudinal transverse re torsional reinforcing. MIDAS allows you to define uh, load combinations for the load rating with different vehicles to create individual rating cases that will run for the model. In order to meet CDOC rating criteria, we created rating cases for HL93, HL93 plus pedestrian loading, nine different legal vehicles, and the CDOT permit vehicle. Live load factors are manually input for each case, so we define our inventory operating legal and permit factors for primary and adjacent vehicles. You can also define your load cases with the um, different load cases you defined in the model. You can see here we have the self weight and the, um, the temperature gradient, the anchor block. Uh, we included all those loads into our different combinations. Uh, MIDAS output is, uh, is generated in, in some friendly tables that look at the different load cases and uh, in different live loads. This table shows our final rating results from MIDAS. Our controlling inventory live load rating was 1.3 for HL93 in strength one concrete flexure. Our operating rating uh, factor was 1.7. Our rating control point was approximately 38% uh, into span three. Uh, before the conclude our presentation, the we will not show, uh, demonstrate some feature in the MIDAS. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the 
the feature is a really fancy to show uh, stress history. Uh, this is the entire model uh, in the 3D view. Uh, we ran this one. Then if you go to result and uh, bridge girder diagram, then we can see uh, we can see this configuration, then we can check the stress. And we need to check the combined total stress. Uh, so also, we can choose which location we're interested. Uh, number four, the indicate the stress at the bottom slot. Then we can choose the stages. Uh, then let's see, make sure. Then apply to see the stress history. Then you can see the entire the stress history for all construction stages. Then you can check the stress demand to uh, order capacity easily. Uh, this is uh, one feature of the post analysis evaluation. Then we are going to the explore uh, how to define the reinforcing uh, to the sections. Uh, if you go to properties, then go to section managers. Uh, there is uh, three items. Then you can select the reinforcement. Then we define the four different the other section properties. Then click one of them. So you can see uh, longitudinal reinforcement tab and then show sure reinforcing tab. Nessa, can you explain? Yeah. yeah, so this is what we had mentioned in the presentation. Here you can input uh, the number of bars and the size, the spacing, uh, your clear cover, and you can do this for the longitudinal reinforcing and then you can put in your uh, shear and torsional reinforcing in the next tab and define, you can define this for each section along your superstructure. Uh, so we have multiple sections because our bottom slab thickens and you're able to define all of your reinforcing here. Yeah, also we can uh, illustrate the graphically for the reinforcing. So go to two, and you can see the, the reinforcing at the top slab, uh, as well as you can see reinforcing at the bottom slab. This is helpful to make sure that you have input them in the correct location. Yeah. So Nessa already explained how to define the shear reinforcement. So if you move on the shear reinforcement tab, then you can define the transverse shear reinforcing and the torsional reinforcing as well as longitudinal portional reinforcing as well. Then another feature that we'd like to share for the load rating. If we go to load rating path, then this is a box uh, a concrete structure. So go to, uh, you want me to go to the yeah, you can see you can choose different load rating codes. Um, we use the latest for our C dot load rating. Uh, this is the um, this is the window we showed before that allows you to define your different load cases in addition to your the individual vehicles that you want to have rated, um, including a primary vehicle and if you want the option for an adjacent vehicle. Then if you go to the another tab for load rating parameters, then we can uh, define uh, the fractural strength, the strength limit, the shear limit, and uh, as well as the service limit state. Here you can also choose that it's a segmental structure. Okay, so um, you're able to choose, uh, you can define groups that you want to have rated, so you can um, define uh, your superstructure separate from your substructure elements so that you just rate uh, a specific group of elements 
in your model. Here you're able to look at the uh, concrete material properties and, uh, and your reinforcing. Um, and that's all of the input. Then you can run through and do the actual rating, um, which takes a while for a model like this. We don't have all of our, our information input. But you can go through and you can run the actual rating, um, and it will provide multiple output tables uh, for the different uh, cases that you defined. Yeah, so unfortunately we cannot able, uh, we cannot uh, show the entire process from the beginning to show output, uh, but we try to the illustrate some feature for post-analysis evaluation, the load rating, and the reinforcing design. But you can see in the, if you go to the slide with our, um, no, the slide on our presentation. Oh, okay. um, go to 41. Yeah, you can see that this is the type of table that is generated in MIDAS to provide uh, your rating results. So it lets you know your controlling load case, uh, your, um, your vehicle that it controls, uh, the location along the the structure and your rating factor, including your capacity and demand. All right, so the, we are going to the, conclude with our presentation. In summary, the load rating of uh, this bridge is 1.3. I believe that uh, CDOT and PTG are happy about this result. Uh, then we illustrate why the construction stage analysis is so important. Uh, also, we verify the behavior of time-dependent materials with uh, hand calculation. And we explore the evaluation of post-analysis feature and the MIDAS uh, design feature, as well as uh, capability of MIDAS load rating for segment or post-tension concrete bridge.